super yacht values often in hundreds of millions of dollars. They'd be a prize for any criminal. And in the past decade, piracy has seen a big resurgence. And super yacht security is more important now than ever. Super yacht vulnerabilities can be put into two categories really. Cyber security and physical security of the vessel, the crew and the owner in port and at sea. One of the ways a billionaire is at risk is through cyber attacks. Of course, they spend millions of dollars protecting themselves from these kinds of things. Satellite internet providers provide strong security and they have rooms full of people constantly monitoring the systems for vulnerabilities. So one form of attack that internet providers can't protect you from is one close to the vessel. So you, you're broadcasting your Wi-Fi on board, but it actually has a reach. Sometimes that goes quite far. And a guy who sat with a laptop can try and exploit vulnerabilities in the security. Hackers use a technique called, known as war driving, where they sit in their car with a laptop, maybe, a, maybe an antenna on the roof, and they just drive around. They do this in uh, residential areas as well, not just, not just around super yachts. A few years ago, I was at the Monaco Yacht Show, and one of the tech companies, this is a few tech companies within the super yacht industry, well-known tech companies, and they did an exploit on, allegedly, on one of the yachts that was out in the marina. They claimed that the Wi-Fi was broadcasting and they could pick it up, and they demonstrated with a big screen, and they showed them gain access to their Wi-Fi network. Now, I, I was a bit skeptical of this because of the legalities of what they were doing uh, and the idea that this un unknowing yacht is sat out there getting uh, exploited like that. I, I found that hard to believe and I feel that they probably set that up themselves. But what it did do is it, it showed how it could happen. And it's not limited to super yachts. Imagine the scenario you go down to your local coffee shop and you order an overpriced cappuccino. And while you're there, you take out your phone. Maybe the cellular is not so good. So you hook up to their Wi-Fi, or what you think is their Wi-Fi. And you could do a little bit of surfing. Maybe you check some messages. Maybe you top up your loyalty card to pay for your drink. And you've just been hacked. So hackers set up in coffee shops. And what they do is they use a laptop and they broadcast a fake hotspot in that coffee shop. So when you go into the coffee shop, you take your phone out and you go to the Wi-Fi settings and you look for free, whatever, coffee, uh, coffee house Wi-Fi, right? And you connect to it, there's no password required, and you connect to it. Now you're surfing the internet. Now, but what's happened is, the hacker is now looking at all of your data and he's using an application called the Network Analyzer or more, more commonly known as a packet sniffer, sounds funny. And he's now, all of the data that you're sending and receiving is going through his computer and through this packet sniffer and he's able to find information that is not properly secured and he can exploit it. And it's not limited to coffee shops. Anywhere you go that has a Wi-Fi hotspot, airports, libraries, uh, the mall, or even in your workplace, you can be vulnerable to these kinds of attacks. So you need to be vigilant. You need to make sure you connect to the proper Wi-Fi. But even if you do, you can still be vulnerable to these attacks because the, the hacker can connect with legitimate uh, Wi-Fi as well and then he uses that same application but he uses it and it's called promiscuous packet sniffing which sounds even more rude doesn't it he uses this to pick up data that's being sent and received on that network and he can still if he knows what he's doing be able to access other people's data the best way to protect yourself from these kinds of attacks is to use a VPN a VPN is like a tunnel right so you have a tunnel, you go in the tunnel here and you come out over here and nobody sees what's happening in between. And that's what a VPN is. But it's using encryption to protect you from anyone seeing what you're doing. So the hacker with his laptop and his packet sniffer, all he's gonna see 
is random alphanumeric characters. I've used a number of VPNs over the years, but my favorite is NordVPN. Now I'm a paying customer. I didn't agree to do this just because they asked me to. I strongly believe in the use of VPNs. NordVPN is the best that I've seen so far. It has a double encryption feature where you can use two VPN servers. And it's so good that the second VPN doesn't even know the original IP of the first VPN. You can use it on all your devices, your phone, your laptop, etc. And you can have up to six devices on one account. And if you're not a fan after 30 days, you can cancel, no worries. And for NordVPN's birthday, they're offering 70% off a two year plan plus one month free and a surprise gift if you use my link and code, code being eSysman. And that means it works out at just £2.63 a month. So I take my security and my privacy very seriously. And while I'm, while I'm on a rant, if you live in the UK, the government requires all internet providers to store 12 months of your browsing data plus all the email headers of emails that you've sent out and that you've received. The header is the data in the, the top bit, which is basically who's emailing who, IP addresses and stuff like that. They don't read the text uh, of the email, but they know who you're emailing and who's emailing you and all of your browsing data. For, and they have to store it. Internet providers have to store this for 12 months uh, just in case they want to take a look. So even when I'm at home, I use VPN. So if they ever check my history, all they will see is nonsense. Superyacht security systems are fighting a constant fight with hackers, with malware, with phishing scams, with spear phishing scams. These are all legitimate names of types of attacks. A phishing scam is where somebody sends you an email and then it has a link in there or it has an attachment with a, an application and it tells you that you, you know, you've, uh, it's from UPS maybe, and uh, you, you've got a refund of $300 and you just have to click on the link. You click on that link, they install some software on your computer and now they can, they've circumvented all of your security and now they can see what you're doing on your computer. The spear phishing attack is when, they, is when somebody who knows you or somebody who, who has information that is close to you, they are able to send an email that makes it look like it's from somebody you know. So it might be addressed, it might, it might come from an email address that is a friend of yours, or it might come from, looks like it comes from a work colleague. Same thing, there's a link in there to click on it. As soon as you click on it, they've got control of your computer. So on board, we're always fighting against this kind of attack. And we, we do this by using the highest encryption we can get and making sure that the switches, the, the hardware that, that all the traffic goes through have the latest software updates and, and, and we use applications to protect against those kinds of attacks and things like Mac, uh, Mac spoofing. So we have software that protects us against the, those kinds of exploits. From January 2021, Cybersecurity will come under the remit of the International Safety Management System, or the ISM code. Supported by the IMO resolution, IMO is the International Maritime Organization, requiring ship owners and managers to assess cyber risks and implement relevant measures. New technology, more autonomy and greater internet connectivity are all contributing factors to greater cyber risk at sea. Even before COVID, the frequency of attacks on the maritime industry had risen by more than 40% in just a year. However, since the start of the pandemic, cybercrime generally has increased by more than 400%. After the recent incident with Motiar Go crashing into a pier in St. Martin, I hypothesized that this could have been the result of a cyber attack. Modern super yachts have more autonomy than ever. And we're not just talking about emails and sensitive data. We're talking about integrated bridge systems and engine control systems connected to the internet, which puts those vessels at greater risk of attack. This is something I'm going to go into in greater depth in a future video.
In part two, we'll look at physical security of the super yacht, the owner, and the crew. The use of ex-military special forces and the need to have armed teams on board in dangerous areas. We will also look at the latest tech that's available and some that's coming soon to help the super yacht owner protect his assets at sea. Remember to like this video and subscribe and look out for plenty more videos like this to come.